Hey Virtual Shine, it's Guy Fieri here. Get ready to be taken to Flavor Town. Peace.
happy Sunday. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen. <laughs> so I decided to shoot this video in my kitchen because today we're talking about the book of Ruth. We're starting a whole new series and I'm really excited about it because there's just so much that happens in this book that just shows that God is in the details of our lives. God is so good. And if you look behind me, there's a sign that says faith and family. And Ruth is a book about faith and family. So a little bit of recap about me, just to share, to relate to you and to the book of Ruth. So there was a time in my life when, um, it was last year, and I lost my job because of COVID. And it was really hard because I, I had all these plans for my life. You know, I bought a home. I was kind of making moves. And I lost my job. And I'm like, God, like... I thought I was led here, like I'm really, I'm scared, I feel alone, I, I don't know where to find a job, I can't see my friends, I can't get a new job, because there's a pandemic going on, and I know that this was such a difficult situation for so many people, and not going to school for you was probably so hard, it was a really hard season for all of us, um, and then flash forward six months later, someone comes into my life, and tells me that they're interested hearing about my heart for students and my heart for Jesus. I'm like, sure, I'd love to talk about that. Because I've always had a heart for students in student ministry. A couple weeks later, I'm working at the chapel, working with you guys, and welcoming you back to our campuses, and just like loving life, loving working with our students, loving doing ministry and, and doing messages like I am today. So passionate about it. And it's funny because I remember like all my life, I always wanted to be in ministry, but it's so cool how God was in the details of my life. So great. So during this message and throughout the entire Ruth message, I just want you to think about ways where God was in the hard times. And today we're talking about that. We're talking about a family, a wife who went, who went through so much, but God was still with her. So today we're going to talk about Ruth 1. In Ruth 1, um, the beginning talks about, there's a woman named Naomi. She's got a husband and two sons. They live in Israel. They have a full family and a famine comes. And if you don't know what a famine is, it's when there's no food. So they leave and they go to Moab. In Moab, her two sons get married. But sadly, within 10 years, Naomi loses her husband and her two sons. It's really sad. There's a situation where she's forced to, to, to make a decision. And her decision leads to one of the daughter-in-laws abandoning her and leaving. But Ruth, title of the book, Ruth is a beautiful woman. She is one of her daughter-in-laws. She says, wherever you go, I'll go. I am right here, right beside you. I thought that that was so powerful. So let's read together. You can open up your books to Ruth chapter 1, verse 6. Ruth's loyalty to my Naomi. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law to return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the fields of Moab that the Lord had visited his people and given them food. So right there, God is providing. He is giving food in the hard times. So she set out from the place where she was with her two daughters-in-law, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each of you to, your, to her mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. So she's saying, As we both have gone through hard times, may God bless you. The Lord grant that you may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voices and wept. And they said to her, No, we will, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Have I yet son, sons in my womb, that they may become your husband? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should, if I should say I have hope, even if I should have a husband this night and should bear sons, would you therefore wait till they are grown? So right here, Naomi, you could tell she's kind of losing hope, right? She's 
She's encouraging her daughters-in-law to go and have a life and to move on with their lives. But she's saying, hey, I just don't see much hope for me. I don't see many plans for me. And that's really sad. Because if you think about it, there's so many times in our lives where we just feel like, God, why am I at this roadblock? God, why am I at this roadblock? Why am I here? Why can't I get out of being here? But sometimes God has us in hard times so that we can lean into him and be with him. Grief and losing someone is really hard. And during this time of COVID, it's been one of the hardest things for so many people, if not the hardest thing. But in my notes right here, it says, Naomi, Naomi rightly attributes her circumstances to the sovereign Lord, but she sees only what he has taken away. So right now she's, she's saying, you know, I don't have anything. I'm not worth anything. Without my husband and my sons, I have nothing. But that's not always true. She had a husband for however long she had a husband. She had two wonderful sons. I encourage you right now to think about the blessings you have in your life. And even when other things go wrong, to know that God is still with you. God is still for you. And as the weeks go on and we continue, Ruth, I want you to really think about and, and really hear Ruth's heart for Naomi, her loyalty to Naomi, but also how Naomi's hope and her joy and her faith grows. Life is it's not always easy, but I'm so grateful to do life with Jesus. Jesus gives us so much hope. And just like how Ruth was with Naomi and she was saying, she said, I will not leave you. Wherever you go, I'll go. That's so Jesus in our lives. We go through hard times. He's right there with us. And I'm so grateful for that because I can't imagine life without Christ. I don't want to imagine life without Christ. So as you go to your community group, try to think about times that maybe you've gone through things or you know someone who's gone through something. Maybe talk about blessings in your life. Because we understand Naomi is going through so much here. But we also need to be reminded that God is still good and he's still in the details. And food came back to Israel. The famine was over. God had plans and continues to. So let's pray together, and I hope you have a wonderful Sunday and that you get to enjoy your day. Dear Lord, thank you so much for our students. Thank you so much for your love for them. Thank you for your heart for them. God, I pray for them as they go through hard times, they see you in the details, that they're reminded of your Holy Spirit. They're reminded of all the truth that you've told us, Lord. I thank you for today, and I pray that our students can grow become more like you, Jesus. Pray this in your name. Amen. Have a great day, guys.